Once again to the Letterman Podcast. Once again, my name is Mike Chisholm. Once again, I am here to lead the discussion, all things David Letterman and company. Very excited to be here as always. Uh, the show is brought to you by, still don't have a sponsor. God damn, we're like nine, 10 episodes into this thing. We still don't have a sponsor, but uh, that might be changing. Something might be happening. There might be something afoot going on with that and uh, we'll keep you posted on that something pretty exciting especially if you like the world of david letterman and company which is the entire reason why this show exists we love talking about the content the antics the legacy of david letterman and company uh this episode of course is absolutely no exception to that um and i gotta tell you i'm very excited about the gal that we have on here tonight uh it's gonna be very very cool to talk to irene to not just tonight but every time she comes on because it ain't just gonna be today let me tell you this gal has stories upon stories her stories have stories when it comes to <laughs> new york when it comes to the late show with david letterman and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that i'm going to kind of uh introduce uh, some of those reasons right now. Now, now she has seen the show 40, I think it's 49 times, 48 times, 48. Plus, plus 48 times, plus an episode of My Next Guest. Um, and and it's been going on for years and years and years. And she's collected us all sorts of uh, things along the way, stories and memories, things like that. But also somewhere along the way, she also collected a guy by the name of Rupert G. This is actually <laughs> Rupert Rupert G's girlfriend is is Irene Hoffman. And I'm very, very excited that she's going to come on the uh, on the show here. Uh, the way Irene and I met was um, I don't know if you would have sat through the entire episode of the Letter Manifesto. That's talking about that night, uh, the story that led up to that, my experience with that. But anyway, I had written it out and I threw it out there to the universe just for people to read it. Irene read that the original incarnation of my letter manifesto and she reached out to me and it was very very clear that she and i had this kinship where we understood each other when it came to being enthusiasts of something and 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 we're both very enthusiastic about the things that we enjoy um and we have multiple things that we're enthusiastic about for example irene doesn't just have very cool memories around letterman she's got very cool uh memories and uh, that she has made and experiences around the simpsons um we're gonna probably get into that whether it's not tonight or one of her future appearances we're gonna get into that stuff but either way um i have a saying that saying that uh, a fisherman can always recognize another fisherman we recognize that both of us have the same level of enthusiasm for the things that we enjoy and um i i am so grateful that irene reached out to me uh the stories that she has told me uh, uh about some of the things the inner workings sometimes behind the scenes but also just vantage points of experience uh her experiences with the late show and with david letterman and with new york uh and 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 rupert too for that matter uh i'm just really excited that i was able to convince her to, no 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 irene you are a great guest for this show i can't wait i can't wait for you to come on here and tell some of these stories that's what she's going to do tonight uh irene thank you very much for letting me leverage our personal relationship for you to come on the letterman podcast tonight are you thank excited you. I'm excited and I'm thanking you. Uh, uh, you've been nothing but encouraging uh, since this show started. Like before the show started, we've been, we've been going back and forth for a while now. And then the show started. You've been one of my biggest cheerleaders, one of our biggest cheerleaders for this thing. Um, I mean, I don't know if Dave's the most underappreciated broadcaster out there, but this show, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, at long last, and there should be dozens of them uh, with the uh, the impact that, that made that man made on yeah. on on the planet Earth, don't you think? Yeah, but uh, it was it was your little manifesto that definitely made because under the undercurrent of what you wrote, had to do with outlook on life and attitude. It had to do with reaching to possibly make something happen in a, in a natural kind way. 
And there were three things that I had spoken to you about that was just an undercurrent of the essay. And you said, absolutely. And I said, that's exactly how I feel. So that's, I, I didn't know you. I didn't know what you look like. I didn't know where you lived. I just knew that I got to, I got to talk to this guy. Well, kindness is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, I'm, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of kindness. Uh, the guy who wrote The Last Days of Letterman, Scott Ryan, he's about to, we're about to drop his episode uh, of, of um, well, he's got, a, he's got another episode coming, a very special episode coming up, but we, we're going to drop his postmortem here soon. Uh, he talks about kindness is, is, is his religion and all of his books that he's released, he has a little blurb about kindness. I love kindness. I know you love kindness. I have said this before, uh, uh, the bow that you have, uh, who 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 uh, owns the Hello Deli out there on Fifty Third Street, <laughs> it's like it's like God took the word kind and made it into a man. Rupert might be one of the kindest individuals I've ever met yeah. in my whole life. He is. He is. He's, he's just so. He's kind. quiet and he loves. He's loves this pattern of life that he's gotten for himself and I, I respect it and I also kind of developed my pattern as well but I, I have never I'm not going to say he doesn't give me some sermons and and he doesn't uh you know try to guide me in my thinking and my whatever but in the end the sweetest kindest most generous man well, and I mean, I check this out now. Now, this is at your uh, you got a spot in Greece too, right? You've got a uh, it doesn't it doesn't show over very well, but you can yeah, see that. That is look at that. Oh my god, I can see it. You guys and hanging out at that's your place. A, that's 12 steps off your front door in Greece, yes, right? Yep, yep, 12 <laughs> steps down, man. Um, I okay, now we're putting carts before horses here, so so you got your Rupert and 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 all happy there and all that stuff. But now you started seeing the show, you said it's 40, 49 times, uh, 48, and then uh, the Tina Fey was the 49th event. You got a ticket for that right in front of you, don't you? I do. Let's see, show us, show us some of the show us some of the, the, the souvenirs I, you got. I didn't realize, and they did, and there's a little perforation there, but Netflix wasn't quite in the groove quite yet. They were just kind of starting up. And yep. then I got to, to put this on, but the irony of this and the, the card that we received yep. as VIP, <laughs> It was 20 degrees out and the, the card said, please wear cocktail attire. <laughs> now, I, I'm a Floridian and we have to wear layers and layers of things. But I went and got a cocktail dress and um, pumps and I had to wear stockings because I was just I'm a Florida girl yep. and I had an oh, I had a puffer coat. It was it kept me warm for the duration that it hit below my knee. After that, the, the, it was all frozen um, <laughs> and I was the only person when they got us into the VIP section. I was standing next to people who were dressed exactly the way I would dress for a late show sure and i said by chance did you get on your card cocktail attire and they said yeah we're from la and this is our cocktail attire <laughs> and i said i've i've been here since and it was like i was three hours early yeah and I cannot tell. I'm looking at everyone and no one but me is wearing cocktail attire. And they go, yeah, no, we just, yeah, we ignore that. <laughs> so I was wearing cocktail attire. It's funny, you know, um, I think he and Conan talked about this uh, when 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 Conan was on one of his, his appearances. I mean, it might have even been the last one that I think about it, where if you go back in the Wayback Machine to watch audiences of The Tonight Show, 
and and when I like they dressed, they dressed just almost like flying too. Like he used to dress up to go flying to go on an airplane. Yes, yes. And, and and then and then it got. I think Conan was talking about how now there people are wearing shorts that. and and yeah, <laughs> yeah. Flip flops. I, I, I love dressing up. Like when when, I, when Candy and I went and saw Dave a few weeks ago in L.A. Um, we dressed up for the night. Like we were, we were ready to go. It was, it was, uh, it felt like an evening out. We wanted to be dressed to the nines in the audience. Um, I don't know what it is about shows like that, but I just, I love the classic dressing up for that kind of stuff. You on all the times that you went, did you dress up every time? I did. I was very, um, first of all, I was 20 pounds lighter and, um, I was always trendy, but depending on the weather and, and Rupert had told me years after when I was freezing and I was the designated driver in line. Um, <laughs> he told me, he said, I, I do remember you came in for two lobster bisques. I said, I, I loved it, but I was also trying to escape the cold. Right. Um, but he, he said you, you had a great outfit on now in the summertime, because we were so sweaty and, my fairy godmother was uh, going to do a kindness for me after the show, as in sitting in D Dave's desk and going backstage. Yeah. Um, I told her I'm in a 1960s, um, it's very Marlo Thomas, that girl uh, um, uh, top with um, a capri white pants so that she'd know well, how to find me yes and when you see the photographs um i was trendy but it was boiling hot outside so yeah. it was sleeveless but it was crisp i tried to be crisp all the time and yet casual now in the in the winter it was also 43 degrees in the studio and we'd always whisper to each other we need muffs for hand muffs for our hands. <laughs> you know we would take our coats and kind of put them over our hands because it'd be cold sure. but um even so i always i always did and i tried to be i was always fashionable so but i you know and and not not be cocktail i was wearing pumps it was <laughs> come on <laughs> They had even they had some little they had some little glittery kind of. I went and bought them that that day because I said, I don't know what to do. I brought this dress and it's not cocktail and you know and I, and I went and bought shoes and dress and stockings yeah. and I was frozen. Well, I, I, the thing I love about it though is is I think that you and I are are similar in the sense that we want to make an an experience. So if we're going to make it an experience, let's have a new outfit on. Let's have something shiny on that's that it's meaningful, that has something to it. And again, that's that thing where we just kind of think the same. Well, because we and want there to turn was, into an experience. there was an additional thing there. And that was, this just looks like a ticket, but the card, and then eventually this, but mm -hmm. the card, I did not want to do one thread out of place yeah. i wanted to follow the rules and yeah. cocktail and i never got cocktail attire in these um <laughs> i never got instructions for that no but and we then, but 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 we did like it was funny like even the way that uh when i when i got onto the to the list to get into the, what I didn't know though, you know, getting on Kevin's gold list to get into the, the front row. And you know what I'm talking about? Like, cause that you, you've experienced that. I experienced it one time. Um, you knew by that point uh, you had gone through the ringer so many times and, yeah. and had like you alluded to your fairy godmothers and stuff. You had started making friends with people uh, behind the scenes and then never mind Rupert later on, but, but at the end of the day, and you, you still had that wherewithal to say, no, you know what? I want to, I want to dress up because of this. Yeah. I told, I told Kevin, Hey, listen, I know what it takes to be a good audience member. I'm going to dress nicely. I'm going to be ready to laugh. I'm yep. very excited to be part of this yep. and to make the show better because right. the audience had a huge part of the show. We talked to Mark Malkoff about that. Um, you know, you know a lot about that because of how many times you saw the show it's to the point where you had some regularity to it where you could kind of, you knew kind of the ins and outs, even before you started becoming friends with these people. 
Well, the pep talk that they give you um, didn't change significantly, and I had it memorized. <laughs> um, and, but, I, you know, I was a very lively participant every single time, yep. and and in with that pep talk. But under my breath, I would be saying, "No one has to instruct me about <sighs> being." exuberant i just i'll clap and i and it'll be real yeah. i'll laugh and it'll be real i'll be excited and it will be real yes, yes maybe you know because i for the 48 times i went I, I didn't really pick up on a dead audience or a i picked up on a very strict theater you know sure. it's a very strict theater but i just was i guess focused on how i felt and yeah. i thought everybody around me most certainly must feel that way and i you know but I don't they know. don't they don't that's the thing and and know. And we don't necessarily know that i see i feel the exact same way my laugh my exuberance my excitement same thing but most people around or many people around me don't they need that pep talk i want to ask you about that pep talk for a second because it's very interesting hey show the ticket the 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 may 20th you were there on the you were there on the uh for the big show at the end they let me keep it <laughs> yeah well and they didn't always do that oh sorry no. say something again so it goes back to you say it again show it up again one more time yeah now, um, she's showing for the audio audience, she's showing a ticket of the uh, her, they let her keep it of the very last show, May 20th, um, uh, 2015. That was the night Dave retired. Uh, my question about the pep talk is, was it different that night? Was there anything different that night in going in? Um, um, you, you do know, because we talked about it prior to the show, I was, um, I was, there in those last days and i was there frequently yeah i noticed a very big change in the sternness and the strictness of the audience for i it says april 16th i was there in february yeah I, I think I could have said that I started to see a relaxation mm -hmm. in February, but this whole week in April that I didn't realize I went every single day. Um, right before me, by the way, you were there the week before I was there, which is mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. Well, it was uh, the, that, that pep talk yeah. had relaxed. And I would say, that last night, I don't remember a hard push. Mm. And the reason is that I was on a thread before I got the okay, because it was, and not a fairy godmother, but a person who works for the fairy godmother um, had said, to me on the phone, that show is only f dedicated for friends and family. And that made me kind of say, well, I think I might need to talk to my fairy godmother. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, it was a very short window right. of, of maybe a week's notice. Maybe yeah. I had a week's notice. Yeah, we, ha we have a ticket for you. And I jumped, you know, and I had a lot more vigor then, but I jumped to it and got ready and got, you know, yeah. was there. But you did ask about the pep talk. Uh, there was a relaxed atmosphere. Um, I think I could say that February that I went, I could start to see everyone kind of letting their shoulders down a little bit rather than the, you know, mm -hmm. that very, very, you know, but at the same time, I will say that rig rigidity caused electricity 
to happen in the theater. Oh, for sure. Like Dave, Dave once referred to it. Somebody was asking him about, I forget what they were asking about. I, I don't even remember who it was, but they were asking about the audience and whatnot. And Dave commented and said, well, the indoctrination, yeah. he used the word indoctrination yeah. that the audience goes through before they come in the doors and, and, yeah. and fill the seats. Um, it, and, and he did, he had an entire ecosystem of worldwide pants that was dedicated to getting the right audience and directing the audience uh, yeah. as to how they were to uh, conduct themselves, behave. And through all your experiences, and I mean, we're gonna get to this on your appearances that you come on this show. Uh, you are a, a, a card carrying member of the Letterman podcast community. And we're so excited about that. Thank um, you. you know, you've got lots of stories about, about things that you've seen, uh, people who were not allowed to come in and, 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 and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, Dave used the word indoctrination. And, and I, I understand where that, well, I understand where that comes from. Uh, and it makes sense that, you know, it yeah. changes an entire show. Well, and here's something else. And, and for the diehards, because I was always there at 11 a.m. And they they did start to really start to shoo people away. And I would shoo away for a little while. And then I'd come back because I did want it to, to be known that, yeah, you know, I'll stand out. The bank across the street says it's 99 degrees and I, you could look at it. The time would flash and then the temperature. And I was just just sopping yep. uh, or the other way around. I was going to I wanted to sh I wanted to represent. But um, I did whisper. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but um, because we had my principal was a, a diehard and is a diehard. Your principal. So this isn't because you were a student. You're all you're you're a teacher, and we should yes. note that. Thank you, by the way, for all your yeah. years of service, because you're one of those teachers. You're one of those teachers that really really cares about your students, and, and you were a phenomenal teacher. So so you would go with your prince with the principal of your school. Uh, as as one of your 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 running mates to the show. Yes, mates. and when I told her that, um, at first I told her I slipped in when the audience left, and it's so such a tiny theater. And she said, "You're lying." I said, "It is," <laughs> and she didn't believe me. And then uh, I don't know, a couple months later, I said to her, um, "I have tickets to the show." two of them if you want to take your sister and she just her she could she just was what and I <laughs> and um so anyway she 38 of the visits she she accompanied me 38 of the 48 times because she was my travel buddy and we were we were just it was a great thing and she she kind of watched me do whatever I do and she just would say, I can't believe it. But I whispered to her because of the time that we got bumped. I said, and they put you through this whole thing. There were a hundred people in the lobby yep. vying for 10 standby tickets. And of course our hand was up just like a good student right away. We knew them all. And, and they knew that we knew them all. And so, but at the very end, um, the 10 of us were bumped. And so I, I whispered to her and I said, it's castration. That's what they do. But then I started thinking about the military. I, I don't know much about the military, except that what I've heard is you go in, you're this, you know, sloughing little kid they break you down mm -hmm. and then they build you back up. Mm -hmm. That was the process. They had to, you know, you had to endure quite a bit. And if you were a person who like, I'm here and I'm good, you went, you, you were tired. You kind of got tuckered out. Then they would build you back up. And then, because you would already hear the music behind the doors mm -hmm. and that, 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 you know, they were doing sound checks or whatever, but you could hear some, somebody practicing or whatever. And, oh gosh, what's behind those doors? And then it was time. And then they, you became the audience that they wanted you to be. 
Yeah. And it was a strict, it was a strict audience, but I feel it had an absolute correlation to the electricity that was going to happen for that hour. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Um, there's a special feeling, and 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 there are going to be people who uh, either view or listen to this program and will be able to 100% identify with what we're talking about here. When they're talking to you, um, you know, it's it's got like almost sections. Like you start off outside the marquee, and then you go into one part of the the the, the, the lobby. Then you go into another part. Then you go into another part, and you go in, and and it it might be another part on top of that, or or one part less, but it's something like that. Well, they and separate they, the ambassador. Okay. The, the people who are going to fill in those front rows, and I don't know if I were to hazard a guess, they would like energetic, handsome, young, lively, and not necessarily young, young, but um, sure. you know, just they kind of they would kind of look for a group that could fill those front seats because they were the ambassadors in the theater yep. and to my eye it seemed like you know it was a very hearty group of of uh, sharp people and they would tell those they would kind of separate those people out there was this feeling of hierarchy and um and those of us later who are uh, the balcony folks you know but i was lucky we were actually, Christy and I were quite lucky, maybe six, seven times or more um, as soon as we were identified, even though I didn't talk to my fairy godmothers, they would let us come out of, and let us go get seated. Okay, so and, let's let's talk about that for a second, because you talk about the balcony folk. Yes, who were yes. like and, and and by the way how awesome was it to see them release uh the uh, um david letterman coming out and warming up the crowd for the very last show because you turn and look because the camera's from behind as Just he's doing out. that and there's irene in the very front row of the balcony when who was it, the balcony mostly um reserved uh, for guests of cbs that's guests. friends and families of the guests that's CBS, uh, that's uh, all sorts of people. Uh, whatever connection, because they yeah. sometimes were uh, like in the news division on 57th Street under the CBS banner. Yep. It could be people like that. They were usually, you know, connected somehow. There were parents of writers uh, or parents of the warm up uh, gentleman that uh, you interviewed. Um, there, his parents were sitting close to me uh, at one time up there, and so were the Sting Stingles' uh, parents yep. there. So they were guests of CBS. Um, they didn't work that tricky magic of hoping to get that ticket. They're from Nebraska, but they're hoping to get a ticket and they do everything that they're supposed to do. And they're finally awarded the ticket. So they're on the on the bottom level. However, mm -hmm. that theater is can't the, the, the balcony is cantilevered almost directly over that um, stage. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, uh, that that first floor. Sure. There's not that many rows. It's it's cantilevered so that it, it's right there. Oh, absolutely. And then, and then the good news is once you learn where to sit, zero obstruction. Okay, no. I'm glad you brought that up because you've been so many times. Uh, and I think uh, Mark Malkov and I talked about this. They've changed this apparently for Colbert. I haven't been back to the Sullivan Theater. Right. I don't know if I, I, I'd have a hard time going back uh, with, with, with Colbert. Can't. You can't. OK, so you know what I'm I talking can't, about. But Christy has. And okay. she never she never talked to me about the um, the uh, doing away with the obstructions. OK, never... but you knew what seats were good and what seats were not in the Ed Sullivan Theater for for Dave's run. Uh, fairy Godfathers. <laughs> folks on the crew who uh hey no no move over the one seat that way or two yes. seats that way yes. who, who, yes. you learn that and, I, and I kept and I kept <laughs> looking and he would shake his head and I went and he kept pointing go over more and so <laughs> I, we would move three seats and I'd look and he goes like 
go to the end. And that's near the sound. There's a sound board or something. I don't know the difference between sound people or lighting people, but it was this wonderful. He, he's, he left us now. Yeah. Uh, Rupert said that he passed and he was he was great because every time after that, I would say, yeah, you I go, I go yeah. every time after that, I would go to him over there and I'd say, thank you for the seat, you know, because it was the greatest seat. And then, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, it's it, Dave's last warm up. <laughs> and the camera kind of because usually the camera kind of goes real fast and then, oh i got there i was no the camera goes kind of slowly yep i'm going oh there i am mm -hmm. oh i was i was a little larger then. <laughs> oh heavens we get self-conscious when the camera hits us don't we uh, <laughs> but, but very it, was cool. so, it was so exciting to see Oh yeah. I can't even tell you. Like, I mean, I don't know how many of those things that they recorded. Uh, I, I, at some point I'm going to ask somebody who would know about this, the question, if, if, if they have the one in behind me here, uh, you know, with me and Dave, uh, my best friend, Dave, by the way, um, if they have that, if they have that one with our exchange, I, I mean, I can't even imagine the, my conversation with him, uh, being recorded, but if it ever was, I mean, what a dream come true for you to, 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 to have seen that. Um, Listen, I, I want to, uh, there's there's one particular story I want to get to, because this is your inaugural uh, appearance here on the show. Um, I want to talk about this, because the first time, um, I, I don't know exactly how it happened. You and I were talking on the phone, and then Rupert came in either on another call or something another like that. Phone, it was, another yeah, phone. Then, the, then the three of us were talking and yeah. it was good. And it was, it was, it was neat. Um, and I love the rapport that he and I have, and it just, it's just, it's just so beautiful to see this. And I love listening to you two banter back and forth. It's just so <laughs> much fun. I, I, I'd make the popcorn and, and just, uh, just enjoy that. Um, but one of the things he said to me the first time, one of the first times was, Hey, Mike, you make sure you get Irene to tell you the story of how we met. Now I alluded when I was doing the intro that uh, you collected things along the way. And, and one of the things you collected along the way is your bow is Rupert. And, and, and so, so the story I I've, I've asked you if you'd tell it, if he'd be comfortable with it. And, and, and you said, yeah. Um, so I really want you to talk about the story of when you guys met. Now I want to be very, very clear the night you guys met is way before you guys ever, you know, yeah. went. Yeah, yeah. It, it, long, long, long time. Long before. time. Long time. Long time. Because yeah. we became family friends. Rupert would. Right. I don't know how he worked it, but Rupert would <laughs> break away and come to the hotel and babysit our children so that we could go to the show. Okay, so yeah, like you became family friends and stuff, and then and then if a line was crossed or however you want to call it, that was way way later. But the night you guys met has a really really kind of crazy story to it. Um, would you mind tell, regaling us with that right now? Yeah, but yeah, but it has to start at the in the morning because we were there. We had flown up to go to the show. Yeah, and um, to go to market and and market was you know jacob javits and you could uh uh find um accessories home accessories home goods and so we were on our way and uh there they had bus lines that uh, would stop at certain blocks and so we walked a couple of blocks and my sister suggested well let's go get some coffee at uh, at Rupert's because I, I at that point I had been and I went into Rupert's the very first time I ever went to the show sure. but, I, but I'd never ever seen any of his skits none my parents had seen them all because they were uh, late show fans my okay. parents but I hadn't so this is but, early on for Dave's run at the Ed Sullivan Theater though right this is, this is like 1990. 95 yeah. okay, something so like early that. on early on yep. yes yes but i didn't know i i just knew that i saw commercials sometimes or i'd heard his name but never saw any of the skits so we went in but on this particular morning 8 a.m we go in and um my sister and i had already talked about it like let's invite him to dinner and there were two other girls with me uh the uh the mother was 
uh, an employee of mine at the um, accessories store. So four women coming into the Hello Deli. Four women. Okay. How yes. often do you think, by the way, that that's happened to him in the years? How many times do you think people come into the deli thousands. and invite him places? Thousands, right? Thousands. Like thousands. Yeah, and and <laughs> I have been in the deli and I have seen some very pretty young girls, younger than he is. And he kind of seems to not, he doesn't, he goes, I don't get guys who go for very young girls I don't I, I'm not <laughs> understand but anyway um I've seen them and I've seen them do more than what we were doing because we were just being friendly sure they were Rupert gets lots of attention yes he gets a, and he got a, a lot of girl a, invitations and such so anyway my sister had already talked to me about let's you know and so I I said Rupert why don't you come to dinner with us and um, I said, we're staying at the plaza, um, but you could come after work and, um, and meet us. Oh, that's so nice of you girls. Thank <laughs> you so much. Um, uh, and he's doing whatever he's doing behind the griddle. He said, we'll, we'll see. And um, my sister was delighted. She goes, he said, we'll see. I looked at her. I said you shut up and then I looked at Rupert and I said and you shut up too meet us at the hotel at 6 30. okay and instinctively he wrote the 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 deli phone number and he wrote his home phone number oh. two numbers the deli and the phone and on the little order sheet where he kind of clipped the order up and he handed it to me. Now we were excited because the bus was there to pick us up and we were on our way and we thought this might happen. <laughs> and my sister and I were going back and forth like, what do you think? I said, I think he's going to ditch. I think he's going to politely ditch. Sure. I said He does but, everything politely. There isn't anything yeah. that he doesn't do politely, I don't right. think. Right. And, and, uh, and he does what he wants. He's can be very stubborn. He can be very stubborn when his, you know, it's hard, hard to shift him, but um, he does what he wants. But I really did think that he was going to politely ditch. And I did not have a cell phone at that time. I, this is, well, maybe, no, I did, but I didn't give him the cell phone number, but he knew that we were staying at the plaza. Mm -hmm. Um, so I thought we would probably get a call that said, thank you so much. You know what? I'm really tired. I'm going to have to, I mean, we'll have to try another time. So two o'clock at market, having a gut feeling that he was going to politely decline, mm -hmm. um, I called and he said he was kind of cheerful about it, you know, four we were in, I was, I was, I think I was 42 or 41, something like that. We were, we were still good. We're still, we're still cranking. But anyway, so anyway, so um, I, I, he said, um, I told him, I said, we're going to be waiting for you 630. And he goes, I, Irene, I, Irene, I really don't have anything to wear. I said, I don't care. Where would you wearing right now? He goes, well, I've been working in, in my work. You know, I've been working in my clothes. Who cares? Come like you are. We're going to, I'm going to take you to a really fancy um, Greek restaurant a couple streets away from our hotel. In, 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 in Molivos, and it was a very great Greek restaurant. And that, and you have a high, you have a high bar when it comes to that. You are Greek. You're very Greek. You've got yeah. your house in Greece. Like you're, you have a high bar. If you say this Greek restaurant is great. Uh, has some stuff, you, yeah, okay. And yeah. it was, it was real trendy and it was real busy. But at the same time, under ordinary circumstances, I probably wouldn't go to New York City to go to a Greek restaurant because we have <laughs> our whole world. Is Greek restaurants okay? Pro probably I wouldn't, sure. but but I knew because we had talked and he was you know real intrigued about the Greek thing, 
So 6.30, at, at six o'clock, I think it was six o'clock. It was six o'clock that we had agreed because about a quarter of six, we were all in the lobby. I said I was going to go up to the room to go to the bathroom, freshen up, you know, uh, put some lipstick on, maybe spray some perfume, and I'll be right back down. Okay, viewers and listeners, right now, here's where the story goes in a direction that you don't think it's going to go. <laughs> so... <laughs> I go and we had uh, we we didn't have room six twenty nine at that at that particular time. Stop it, honey. Yeah, that stop. So anyway, come to mommy. Yeah, you like you like room six twenty nine whenever you stay at the plaza. What a because, thing to say, by the way. Because uh, it's an eight hundred and fifty square foot uh, a room right on Fifth Avenue at the very best vantage point it, it, i've been on the third floor in that same uh uh it's just not sixth floor is the best and you can open the windows with the big ledges and if you wanted to kind of fall out of the window it was possible and so <laughs> so that was one of the rules after years had gone and we, he'd become close to our family and he was babysitting our kids do not I don't care what they tell you or ask you or plead with you. Do not let them sit on the ledge of the window. <laughs> he did every single time. He did every <laughs> single time. He was there. He didn't open it wide, too wide. He was standing right there. But the yeah. thrill of their being able, because yeah. I, I said, you don't follow instructions. But anyway, so I went up to the room and this was a, a an interior suite with two bedrooms, two bathrooms. And um, I loved it. I loved it. Had a, a, a fireplace. Lovely. Yep. And so um, I walked in and the bathroom was right in front of me as I went in and a very handsome gentleman jumped out of the bathroom, handsome, tall, blonde. To your room. In my room, yes. ex extremely well-dressed, um, had a, a very sharp navy, dark, dark navy jacket on. I, I mean, I, I took in his image right away, but something wasn't right. And he said, we're with security. We're, we're, we're checking out the rooms. And, and I, I was going for it. And then he pretended to lift his arm and talk as they sometimes do here and say, we got to go in another room. It's not this room as if he was talking to someone in the back bedroom. Yeah. And then I saw a small leather briefcase and that right there, I'm so gullible. I am so, you tell me something and I'll go, really? Okay. So I, I'm that person who thinks everybody's grand and great, but I saw that little leather briefcase and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't turn the door handle. And I said, please don't hurt me. Just don't hurt me because of that briefcase, tiny, small and he he tried to make commotion as if he, he was still playing the part of security sure. but I, I finally got the door open and the uh, um elevators back elevators or front elevators i happened to be closer to the back ele elevators no i was no sorry there was the front ones but they're notorious they at that time notoriously slow right you could and of course People stupidly think that if you just click the button 18 times, that's going to make the elevator come faster. It's just one time the light, it lights up and the elevator will eventually come. So well, even, though, even though you're gullible or you say you're gullible, self-professed, uh, you had a sixth sense that even that, that something was something was wrong because of the um, leather briefcase. Yeah. And you got yeah, out of there. I, I ran and, yep. and I tap, 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 and the door opened immediately, immediately. Was he coming and after you or did you not look I back? thought, but I heard a thumping on the rug 
thump, 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 thump. And then a, and a door down the seats. Uh, presidents could never stay at the plaza because there are so many stairwells, okay. so many stairwells, too much to monitor. Right. And I and so I heard the, a, a, a door shut on the stairwell. Yep. So I thought maybe and I went down and immediately and now it's five of six. Our engagement was six. I go in immediately to VIP and I become friends because of our frequency three, four, five, six times a year yep. going there. And so I know this man and he looks as if he could be a former chief of police of New York City, which mm -hmm. he had been. Wow. Or, or he could be the godfather. because <laughs> That's how intimidating this guy looks. And he worked for the plaza. Yes, and he, knew him. he okay. was retired. He was retired, and he worked for security for the plaza. You didn't I even said, go back to your friends by this point. You just went right to this guy. They, they, I did. Yep. But they saw me, kind of like, beeline. I told them I've got a problem. I said to my sister, "There's, I've got a problem," and I started to feel haggard. And when I see the photographs of us at dinner. I, I'm so kind of disappointed because you can see it in my eyes, like, oh my God, I could have gotten killed. Oh my goodness, oh something boy. bad could have happened. Oh okay, so yep. so I go and I tell him there's something terrible. There, a man was. I, I, I he was tall, blonde. He was well dressed. He had a, a a a small leather briefcase, and he goes, "Do you believe that you could identify him if we were to?" walk with you through the, the rooms, the Oak Room, uh, the Oak Bar. I said, yeah, if, as long as he doesn't hurt me, I know exactly what he looked like. And he said, there were two, two him and a, this young man named John, who was a, a detective. And um, we started to, to walk through the rooms. And I said, no, he's not here. And then we went to the uh, Oak uh, Bar. And I said, no. I do not see him. Mm -hmm. And as we circled, three three more security guys, all dressed, kind of like the guy who was in my room, not not too far off. I mean, they were very yeah. nicely dressed. The guy in my room was impeccable and handsome. So, um, as we're coming around again, here comes the blue down jacket that i've recognized because he had he hung it up in the deli <laughs> and he's coming up with his jacket on fifth avenue entrance and there's five men with irene and they all look and sal the head of security Chief of police or <laughs> Don Corleone? I don't know. So anyway. And Rupert's and, like, what the hell did I just get myself and into? Rupert saw it. And I'll never, ever forget the, the expression on his face. I did not know at the time that his policy was to not fraternize with late show fans because he had his own business and his own life. I didn't know that. And he's coming up and he sees me with these men and the look on his face was, <laughs> what did I get into? And who are these people? And what designs would they have on me? And I said, Rupert, let go with my sister. She'll show you around the the hotel, the downstairs of the hotel. I've got to go with these men. And, you know, and he's going to Maria, my sister. What happened? Now, my sister doesn't know because I hadn't had a chance to be able to convey. So I go in and they start asking me questions and I'm, I'm kind of looking at the clock and I, and I said, um, I gave the description. I told him he had a leather uh, uh, briefcase, right. um, everything. And I said, but, but here's what happened. 
they walk out back with me because I said, we just want to go to dinner with Rupert. And if, if, um, if never watch TV, we got yeah. Rupert from the Letterman yeah. show here right no. now. It's wait. kind of a bad time. Wait, no, hold on. He, and I said, I'll answer any questions when you, when I get back. I said, but they, this guy, if he is a robber, he picked the wrong, uh, he, he picked the wrong room. I said, I'm a school teacher. I put a box of cornflakes in my suitcase for my snacks, you know? So I said, he picked the wrong room. So anyway, he, they walk with me because they recognize him at first, but I had to do the little thing. As soon as he was standing with the three other girls of my party, two other girls and my sister, um, as soon as this group of men, and, and it was a group now, now we had the whole corral of these men. An entourage. <laughs> no longer existed. How you doing, Rupert? It's very <laughs> nice to meet you. Every single one, I would drop me like a hot potato. How you doing, Rupert? I, I, love, I love what you do on the show. Because don't forget, these, these security start at like, like 530 and they go till 2 a.m. You know, they're the, so they're going to go in the office and turn on. They know the guy. <laughs> they escort me and I am a non-entity. How you doing, Rupert? So we went to dinner and uh, Rupert went home because he's an, he went home at 9 p.m. But we had the funnest time. It was just like with you, like I knew him forever. Yeah. And, yeah. and I told him, you need to try this. And we just piled on the food. And he was pretty familiar with Greek food too. Mm -hmm. But he goes, well, I always was, I always wanted moussaka. I said, you got to order it. I don't like it, but you, I, if people love it, you got to order. So we just had, we just had a, a lot and it was fun. So he leaves, goes home, Usually he goes to sleep by 8.30. Mm -hmm. We go back to the hotel and John, this detective, greets me and opens his hand and says, are these your items? And I said, they are. A pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses, mm -hmm. a, a sterling bracelet. I don't know, two other things. There are four items. Those are, those are ours. And they, we go back to the room, John, and Sal comes in for a little bit, but John and another guy, a detective, uh, come in, and the entire room is gray with fingerprints, dust. Wow. And um, we just kind of were like, oh, gosh. I said, I'm just so glad I just, he wasn't violent or anything. I said, and he was so handsome. So, um John says, no, they have not said anything. I heard him say that, no, they haven't asked or said anything. And he goes, girls, don't you want to move to another room? And I said, I really like this room. <laughs> <laughs> it was gray dust everywhere <laughs> with fingerprints. And I said, I really like this room. But then all of a sudden, because I'm not a quick thinker, if you give me three days, man, I'll be, I'll give you a sharp, sharp retort. But, <laughs> I, um, but all of a sudden I went, but is room 629 available? Ah, there we go. Yep. And, he, and John goes, let me see. Um, room 629, is it open? Girls, pack your bags. You're going to room 629. <laughs> So we definitely got, you know, because that room, they would give it to us. At a, I, I don't even want to tell you what the price is, because that's yeah. why we could go. The, the plane ride was very affordable uh, for us. It was a bus ride, a two hour bus ride, and it was affordable. And yeah. also, um, uh, we just created a history and we stayed there and we would go four, five, six times. And, yeah. and 
same people. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, you were a school teacher and, and it's not like, you know, uh, you know, you're well to do or any of that kind of stuff. And you didn't use your contacts no. to get in with the late show, any of that stuff. No. You, you, you basically had a relationship with the plaza, very similar to how some people have uh, with relationships with hotels in Las Vegas. If you just continue to go, you get to know people yes. and along the way people, yes. yeah, you just build a rapport yeah. with them and then you go yeah. And, and a lot of them, I'm sorry, but my little doggy is kind of thinking that he's- Hey, who do we got well. here? What's uh, what's the third member of this uh, this podcast? Who do we have here? Oh, it's just, this is Rupert's dog because he, uh, he didn't want me to get him. I had him two weeks, three weeks before, because we would talk every night and he'd say, Irene, you know, a dog is a lot of responsibility. I love dogs, but I don't know. And I-, I I had him for three weeks while he's giving me that lecture every night. And um, I said, Rupert, the dog is here. He goes, you got a dog? I said, for three weeks. He goes, let me see a picture of him. And um, he goes, bring the beast to the airport when you come get me. And then from now on, when Rupert comes, I he knows I'm mommy, yeah. but I'm gone. I, it's, it's Rupert's dog, and 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 this one. If you if you say Rupert's name or if he calls, and I always put on speakerphone. This he's doing this position so he can be close to oh. Rupert's voice. So anyway, um, yeah, yeah. So that's how it, we we did build a rapport, and 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 if people stay you know, long enough at a place. And, yep. and a lot of them have make that kind of a, a career because it was a 15 year stint with a, a, every time, only once. The first time we went to the late show, we st stayed at the Riga Royal and yep. a lot of celebrities who are going to Rockefeller Center to be on shows or to the late show, the celebrities stay there. We did it because it was just so close and convenient. Yep. But well, you got a, you got some stories around that that we'll tell in some future episodes too. That are, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, really good, really, really awesome stories. Um, now, there's a PS to this one, though, isn't there? You, you, who, who the gentleman was that uh, that it ended up, ended up being. Um, yeah. You found out about that. What uh, I, I hate to say that we got to finish it up with this, yeah. but don't worry, everybody. She's coming back a lot. She is. You <laughs> well, want to talk about a founding member of the Letterman podcast community. Irene is it. She's coming back. <laughs> but but I, I do want to finish this story here because it's got a kind of a holy it's, cow. It's crazy. Your, your how... intuition when you saw that briefcase was right. Yes. And, and when we came back, John and Sal, I we, they took me into the VIP office, their office, yep. and um, they said they found the jacket. It was rolled up and stuffed in a maid's cart. They found the leather briefcase, and it had 17 um, premier hotels in the area uh, of keys that that would open people's doors, and um, and and then. Sal said, we know this man. He has been hitting and he eludes us. But tonight, when you went off to dinner, we got him. Yeah. And we accosted him at the subway and said, sir, sir. And they knew, he knew that there's, these are official people are you a guest of the hotel? And he turned and he said, I am. And he jumped the turnstile, got on a train and eluded them. But he, they had known him from prior and couldn't get him. And that's kind of a thing for Sal who looks so, oh, he's so, yes, sir. Whatever you say, sir. You know, he's so intimidating looking, but he's a nice guy, but sure. whoa. Okay, but anyway, he um, he wrote me a letter with the Plaza logo and everything on it about seven months later, mm -hmm. and it was a color photograph. I had told him, I had said, look at your videotape. I, I watched 60 Minutes. I watched 2020. <laughs> um, Donald Trump has 
cameras everywhere. Sure, and it was, I mean, the early 90s though, so you weren't sure exactly how much, like surveillance now uh, yeah, has, has, has evolved. Out. Back then though, I mean, it was there, but it wasn't what it is now. No, no. What happened was Donald Trump, when he had it, because it was just transitioning to, I think, an Arab had bought it. It was transitioning to this Arab's ownership. But there was legal issues. Um, I don't know who, I don't know how, but I don't know, even know if it went into litigation. But there was a, a claim that privacy was invaded with so sure. many of so many cameras. Yep. So Sal said, we only have them in the elevators now and at the entrances, the main entrances. He said, we took them out. So this photograph was him on the Fifth Avenue, you know, it's a, the rotating doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The entrance what exit the, to the Fifth Avenue side. What are those? What are they called? Come on. Revolving oh, doors? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> he was coming out again, beautifully dressed and a very clear snapshot of him. And I, I, I came after school, checked my mails, opened it up and called. And he was there. And I said, Sal, the photograph that you sent me is the man. And he said, would you be willing to come up? You know, uh, we would compensate your trip. And here's me. Oh, I get another trip to New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll go not, see Dave. Sure. Not, not thinking. <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I going to be the only one testifying again? And then this guy's going to find me. And then the next thing I know, it's not a briefcase, but a, a, a razor blade. So anyway, <laughs> but but then I, I did say yes. But then afterward, not even a week later, he said, he said, we've got him we've got him because he, he they had that photograph yep about a week later i guess he was hitting it hitting again and um they got another photograph in the elevator but they accosted him at the elevator asked him if he was a guest he said yes he pulled out a gun he shot the pant leg of one of the detectives Holy and man. he ran out the fifth avenue exit with a gun to a cabbie's head he had gotten into the cab and and ordered the cabbie to to go the cabbie was smart i always think about this it's daring but it's smart the cabbie opened his car door and rolled kind of did, it, did this tumble to the back of the car and by that time, they had him. Oh they had gosh. him. And they said, he, Sal said, we're so glad. He goes, this man has been my nemesis, you know? And he said, um, uh, he has AIDS. Didn't look it. Wow. And my, all my sister could fixate on is whether he used her toothbrush or not, um, you know, because this is you were still you were still yeah. un, un, uneducated. Yeah. No, uneducated. I get it. And so, um, and he, um, he had been caught before and done some time, but this time Sal said, "No, he's he's in, he's going to be in." That's and it. He, yeah, it, yeah. it. We got him. So. It was a happily ever after, but I will tell you to wrap it all up. When we left that week, yep. I we did, I do in my suitcase. I don't bring cornflakes, but I bring a lot of snacks. You know, I've got we've got the Dollar Tree. I can get my Mounds bar and I can get and we and we back then we would even bring, you know, a few cans of soda. Everything's expensive. So yeah. it's like we can hold it. Let's bring it. And they didn't care back then. And so I asked Rupert to come before we left because we have all these snacks and then we'd pick some up at the you know fruit stand or whatever it was yeah. and i said i said do you have anybody a niece a nephew a, you know somebody around the house and because i didn't know him and uh he came and he said we put him in a 
shopping bag like a Bergdorf Goodman. I'll bring my own snacks, but I'll 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 check out the shoes at Bergdorf. Of okay. course. <laughs> okay. So I mean, you know, you gotta kind of balance things out. But anyway, it was a fancy shopping bag. Yep. And it was it was filled. Fiddle faddle, the popcorn that has the caramel on it. And um he said, I wouldn't mind if you walked me to the exit because I don't want th them to accost me at the door and say that I raided the, <laughs> the snack bar. The, the, you know, you, you, and we had all those little doodads that were available. He's so proper. I love how proper he is. He like, was, I love that. It's, it's does, so endearing. I just can't be <laughs> accosted by taking things from this hotel. Rupert, they're from Dollar Tree and they're from around here. We didn't touch the mini bar, okay? So anyway, I walked him down and he had that bag. And then, um, but what was funny is that the day that we went to that Greek restaurant, we had such a fun time. Mm -hmm. The next day we went to market and it was blizzarding. It, it, we had to delay our, our trip a day, but Cookie and her daughter flew out. They flew out, uh, I think, a day uh, uh, before us. Mm -hmm. We had such a fun time. I called Rupert at the deli and I said, Rupert, not tonight because it's blizzarding outside. I said, but tomorrow night, let's go to dinner again. He goes, okay. And yeah. we, I, he took us to a really great place i can't remember but i do remember going in he knew that you know where to go but i said there is not an unhandsome unbeautiful person in here the whole place was nothing but beautiful people hmm. and i it, he went because he heard about the food Sure. The food, sure. the food was phenomenal. And then as we were coming uh, talking, I said, come to Tarpon when you got it. And he said to my sister, he said, um, your sister's drunk. And my sister said, she's drinking ginger ale and, and um, cherry juice. <laughs> she's got a Girl Scout. <laughs> I didn't know I was drinking because, <laughs> and I said, get your calendar out. He goes, I don't have a calendar. I said, okay, think of time. Think of coming <laughs> down. Yeah. And that, But that's when it was, we'll see. But I didn't give up. I'd call the deli and I'd say, okay, it's time to come down. It's, it, it's nice weather in February. And he did. He came down in February and um, went fishing. He goes, is there fishing down there? I said, yeah, I'll get you hooked up with fishing. Is there anyway, fishing down there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's so funny. We, we were talking about somebody about pot and and um, he's so sweet and innocent and naive. He goes, does he take pot? <laughs> I said, first of all, Rupert, usually people say, does he smoke pot? They don't usually say, does he take pot? As I like he, when people put the in front. Do they do the pot? Yeah. I like, I like that. Well, he might as well talk. He, he does such weird things with the phrasing. And I said, you live in the most exciting city in the world. And when I found out where he lived, which is two, two, uh, sure. uh, uh, two blocks from the uh, Central Park and one block from the Dakota House. And so I said, we used to go to a coffee shop right here called La Fortuna. He said, we would go to La Fortuna all the time. It's right near my house. Oh, and he goes, definitely. I wonder if I ever saw you there. I said, I don't know, but we loved it. And I said, we loved the back patio. He goes, I went there too. <laughs> small world small world well and anyway. i love I, I i hate that we gotta end it here yeah. but we're gonna we're gonna end it but um i just appreciate i think our audience will also be able to appreciate holy cow we've got some really cool 
anecdotes that are that are that are coming down the pipe at the Letterman podcast here. And that's really at the end of the day. I, well, you know, because I've been talking to you about it a little bit. We've got some killer guests coming up that uh, yeah. worked for the show or or, or were around yeah. the show and, and some cool things. But yeah. at the end of the day, the other component to this show is the love of the audience because when dave broke the fourth wall and made us all part of 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 what he and his his company has have done um a very important part of what it is that we do here is the fact that so many of us have these amazing stories that wrap around it and 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 we all felt like we were part of it and and when you talk about rupert like that and all of the uh, I, I think part of the reason that we love him so much is because he phrases like that. And because, yeah. of, uh, you know, it's just, he's got this, he's got this beautiful, uh, innocent charisma. I don't know how else to say and it. Let me tell you something. He's a straight arrow. I did, I did force him to take me to three different venues to see Jackson Brown front row. Nice. That was, that was mandatory and he enjoyed himself, but on the, he told me, Irene Jackson's playing for one more. He put, he, he booked the beacon for one more day and uh, they're selling tickets for $35. And I said, let's get them. And yeah. we took his brother and we sat up high and there was this big square, uh, not front front, because we'd already done the front row of the beacon. And I'm sorry, it's very disappointing because the stage is really high rather yep. than the intimate like this. Yep. But anyway, this area, and it was empty. So I said, Rupert, those seats are empty and I'm going to run you down and, and take a look. And this was one third into the concert. It's a little late for a latecomer. Yep. Already that far in. This section was sublime. Had I known, I wouldn't have fussed to get those daggum front row tickets because it was just perfect. Yeah. The, yeah. That perfect sensation and no obstruction because there's rows, a, a, a big rectangle. I run back up in excitement. I said, Rupert, they're wonderful seats. Come down come and come down and let's sit in them. Oh no, 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 I can't. I, I mean, I can't be seen not sitting in the seat I'm assigned. <laughs> I said, nobody's coming. I, 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 I'm, and if they do, I will say, I did it. I did it. I encouraged it. We're, we're very sorry. I told him, I said, I, I'll, it's my fault. No. I said, I have to go down there for a few minutes. And so I did a couple songs, felt bad. So I'd go back into the $35 seats way up there. I said, Rupert, there's nobody in the seats. No. Mm -mm. Aww. <laughs> um, you're we'll going to Greece again. for the you're going to the Greece Greece for the summer soon, right? Um, just a few days. A yep, few days. Um, okay. So we just, we just got you. Okay. Um, we're, we're going to do this again. I know you're going to probably do a postmortem, um, but we're, we're going to figure something out where. Can you tell uh, me what a postmortem, I know what postmortem means in real life, but what does postmortem mean? So, mean so the, the postmortem is uh, our clever way of, of doing review episodes of uh, content Dave puts out. Okay. So we did the one with, uh, We've got one uh, with Rusty that went up already. Rusty, who hosts the uh, Wake the Neighbor. Hey, shout out to Rusty, Mike at the Wake the Neighbors. Or wake, now I'm doing it. Oh my God, Jay. Wake now I'm doing it. Wake the, the uh, Wake the Kids. The Thank you. Wake the Kids okay, the Neighbors. Wait a God second. damn it, Jay. Wait, wait, wait. wait. What happened with? Because I like he forgot when he was with Jay and he was in the car yeah. and it says Irene, uh, hello, uh, uh, and and he forgot me and and he goes. Oh, I didn't know that was you. Because we correspond a <laughs> yep. lot. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah totally. So, so what happened? Wait, what's what happened with him? So, so, no, no. So we had him on an episode of The Postmortem already where we went over the Kevin Durant episode of My yes, Next Guest. So I watched that. So that's what The Postmortem is. It's going to be uh, special guests 
uh, talking with with me about certain episodes of new Letterman content that come out. So okay. you and I are going to do that um, on, on on one of them, and 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 we've got so many stories for you to come back and tell. Um, I want to get one with the uh, with with the bay with either the sunrise or the sunset in the background. Let's do that while you're in Greece, okay? Let's do another one. Oh, I would. I I, I am. I'm asking, please, if we can chat while I'm on my veranda yeah. um, to make you all enticed to want to come because it's a great little island. It's oh, a Candy and I island. are coming. Don't worry about that. Candy and I are coming. Well, um, I, I, you know, I just want, I want people to know it's, it, it's a, a great place. And my brother is 53. Um, he was 50 by the time I finally told him please don't be dumb. Come to Greece. Why? And that's it. He's coming no. with me this trip too. He loves it. It's oh, just, that's... it's paradise. And if you ask Rupert, you, I don't know. You, you didn't speak to Rupert about this, right? No, uh, no, not yet. Not yet. Oh, he, he would, if he had an option, he wouldn't want, he would not want to come home. Yeah. Well, it's, I can see it. Just looking at the picture that we showed earlier. I mean, so that's we just... talk. We'll yeah. talk in Greece, yeah. but that means that means I have to be caught up on the episode because you know how I am. I get kind of I see a lot of them, but if we're going to do any talk about that an episode, I got to make sure I see it. Yeah, I absolutely. Do. Oh yeah, no, no, we're gonna have some fun with it. Um, thank you very much for uh, you know what I'm gonna give. I'm gonna do the same line that Dave did to uh to Peter Lasalle the night that um. The night they did the Carson tribute, uh, Dave said to Peter LaSalle, uh, who was the guest that night, and they talked about Johnny Carson. He, he said to him, he said, thank you very much for, I hope I didn't uh, take advantage of our friendship. And I, I want to say the th same thing to you. I, I, I thank you very much for letting me take advantage of our friendship and you coming on here and doing this. Thank you for the encouragement that you have given us here. Um, lots more good stuff to come. Can't wait to talk about some of the other stories that you have in that in that head of yours and, 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 and relive some of those experiences experiences again you've got so many of them and uh i and can't wait to go through and to hear them uh and, and have I mean, them documented and almost all of them are just magically good yeah 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 i was um, i was lucky and blessed and I had fairy godmothers. <laughs> well, you sure did. And shout out to the fairy godmothers uh and yeah. shout out to all of our fairy godmothers that we have here. Yeah. Um that is it. That is another episode of the Letterman podcast. Irene Hoffman has uh, given us of her time. We thankful, we are very thankful to her. Thankful for all of the amazing response that we've gotten. I can't believe this thing is only six, seven weeks old uh, with, with the response that we're getting, the momentum that's happening and a lot of cool things coming down the pipe. Uh, please like, share, subscribe in whatever order you want. Please tell more people about this thing. The Letterman podcast is going places um, and we want to uh, bring this community all together. We got a Facebook growing on uh, uh, Facebook. We've got a community group growing on Facebook. Uh, it's the Letterman podcast. Just look for the group. Uh, please come in and join it. Uh, positive, happy, love, magical, just like all the things Irene was talking about. That is another episode of the Letterman podcast. Uh, my name is Mike Chisholm, thank you and good overcoat and underpants.